I'm McC John McCain getting slammed by uh, Donald Trump. And joining us here this morning, so passionate about this, so emotional when he heard this, is John Dadian, political consultant, U.S. Marine, and a political consultant for 30 years. And John, I got to ask you, in your 30 years of consulting politicians, have you ever seen anything like this? I can honestly say with a straight face, after 30 years, I did not think anything could surprise me. I was wrong. Yesterday, I was flabbergasted. Yeah. All right, so let's go over what he said. And uh, basically, he is slamming John McCain. He was talking to some pollster, and the pollster said, you know, basically, how can you say that about McCain? He's a hero. And he went on to say, he's no hero. He got captured. People who get captured are not heroes to me. Before we go into the McCain background, let's really put this in perspective. He's applying for a job to be the commander-in-chief. The, the chain of command in the military, starting with the lowly private up to four-star general, is the commander-in-chief is your highest boss. You salute him, you report to him. For this guy to want to be in the White House, God forbid, if we have any more POWs, what would they think if he would be their commander-in-chief? What is he thinking? Is he so such a megalomaniac? And I know that he's this corporate guy who has never said I'm sorry to anyone, and he's never answered to anyone. Is he just so far removed from reality that he thinks he can say anything and get away with it? The simple answer is yes. Um, again, what he said was because he was captured. But the, for those who know about the McCain background, when you go down deep layers, not only was he shot down in a combat mission in an A-4 a uh, jet, but the reason he was captured is when he was ejected, both his legs were broken. And then he, when he landed, the Vietnamese beat the heck out of him before they even dr drug him off to prison. So put that into context. Context. Then here's the important point as far as the definition of a hero. McCain was called by the Vietnamese the prince because both his father and grandfather were four-star admirals. McCain was offered by the Vietnamese to be released early. He could have gotten out of way before his five and a half years in prison. He refused because the code for POWs is your release in the order in which you were captured. Not only did he refuse, but because of that, they started torturing him almost every day for the next several years. That's a definition of a hero. And during that time, Donald Trump was probably getting a haircut. Well, I don't know, because it doesn't look the haircut has worked. <laughs> it doesn't. You know, you said, uh, we talked to you a lot, uh, you said uh, when the Donald got into this thing that he's got a shot. What do you think today? I think his shot just got shot down uh, because, again, he was credible, and I've used on uh, my interviews with you, Dan, the comparison with Ross Perot. Ross Perot could have been president if he hadn't dropped out the first time. When he did drop out and come back in, he still made such an impact that it did change the election. He got 20 percent of the vote, and that kept Bush senior from becoming president. So, uh, so Donald Trump could have had an impact on the race. I don't see it now. Yeah. Should have we have been taking this guy seriously at all from the beginning? I know a lot of people that weren't. They thought it was a comedy routine, and they, they treated it as such. Right, and I was very harsh on those people because for the ones who did not support him, did not like what he said, I said to them, you're the ones who should take him serious because he could win up until that point. Absolutely. And I know that the Huffington, Huffington Post is a liberal website, uh, used to be owned by Ariana Huffington, but they now say that Trump will no longer be on the political page, he's on the entertainment page next to Kim Kardashian. And I think that's uh, absolutely... So you agree with Huffington? I think, <laughs> for once, I agree with the Huffington Post. Uh, and I think that it's appropriate because, again, what yesterday showed is he's willing to say anything. And when you get somebody like that, you use you know, a couple of terms to describe him. I just appear to think that's dangerous. And the other thing is he has to deal with 535 members of Congress who can say no to him. And I don't think he's ever been said no to. Well, there, there's a good example. I mean, again, if he became president, I was looking at who we would appoint around him. And so he could have been, you know, a, a commander in chief. But uh, right now, I just don't see even the supporters are scratching their head after yesterday. Well, as Mitt Romney said, uh, John McCain may have been shot down, but Trump just shot himself down. There you go. All right. I think that's accurate. John Dadian, thank you. Coming fresh from church for us. I am, actually. You were so fired up, you said, I want to talk about this. Don't, don't tell the, the priest that I had my cell phone in church. <laughs> I need that you were Facebooking in church. All right. John Dadian, thanks a lot. Very good to see you, Dan. We always appreciate your input.